Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think we've extended our grace period a couple extra minutes, so I apologize for that as we experience some technical difficulties. I'm not known for doing well with technology, so I apologize for that. Um, so I just want to welcome all of our visitors this morning. If you are a visitor, we would love to hear from you. We are taking uh, new visitors' information online. So if you will check us out on our website that is listed on the very back, we would love to get your information there. Does anyone have any praises or prayer requests from this past week? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Drawing it out as long as you can. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, any others? Yes, I'd like to ask for a prayer for very good friends of mine, Holly and Lee Markham. They were neighbors of mine and Moses and, and Al, uh, Angela and Lawrence. We live down on Fort Wayne Road. They've been taking it. They've been going to a fertility clinic. They've been having trouble trying to have a child for so long, so desperately. And she went yesterday uh, to do whatever they do, and it was it hadn't worked right, and so they weren't able to do whatever it was they were going to do. And they're very frustrated with their pushing forward uh, with their they call them their prayer warriors. So I would like very much to have us join them and go through the work the next time. You said that was Ollie and Lee Martin. Ollie. Any others? Uh, my dad is back home recovering from his fall bladder removal. So thank you. <laughs> yes. Who's your, what's your dad's name again? Paul. Paul. Let us join together and worship this morning. Christ. If you can, I would ask that you join me in standing in our prayer of praise and adoration to our God this morning. Gracious God, you have searched us and know us. You indeed discern our thoughts from afar. You lead us in the way everlasting as we gather to bless you for your bountiful mercy. For the compassion and care you extend to us. You surround us with a mantle that protects us from danger. Our breastplate is your righteousness fulfilled in Christ Jesus. You are our shield and defender, our hope and our comfort. We give you all praise as we assemble in Christ's name.
illumination this morning. Lord, as we come to you today, may the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our foundation. Amen. This morning's scripture reading and our Old Testament reading comes to us from the book of Isaiah, from chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. You're welcome to join along in your bulletins or in your Bibles if you have those. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witness. Is there any God beside me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Now, if you can stand as you are able or feel free to stay seated, I would like for you to join this morning in our responsive reading from Psalms 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give me your strength to your servant. Save the child of your servant girl. Show me a sign in your favor. So that those who hate me may see it, they put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. You may be seated. And our lectionary passage in our New Testament reading this morning comes from Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. So if you're following along in your Bibles, there will be a bit of a skip. Today we're going to be looking at Jesus' parable of the weeds and his explanation, which is the part where we skip some, his explanation of his parable as well. Would you join with me? He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seeds in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and, when, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore again, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Did you not want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with the weeds. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is this world, and the good seeds are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun with the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So at this very moment of time, there's probably quite a few of you who are wondering what I'm doing up here. 
And if we're being honest on my part, at this very moment in time, I'm wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> so almost 28 years ago, my family decided that since my aunt was directing the Christmas pageant at the time, that we would come over here for a little while from the church we were attending, and I would be a part of the Christmas pageant. And that's where I got my starring role as just a plain old sheep. It was great. So after that, we decided that that was the reason, or that was what brought us here, and my family would start going to church here. Over the next 28 years, I got to make some of the best decisions of my life. In 1994, I got baptized, right there. In 2011, I got married right about here, okay? And then in 2018, I was standing right about here, and I was talking to some of the ladies that were in first service that, for some reason, this morning were still right where they were sitting. And I told them that I just really felt like maybe I had missed my calling in life and that I was supposed to start again. And I kind of thought that maybe I was being led into ministry. So as time went on over the next three years, if you've ever had a calling in your life or a sense that you're supposed to be doing something, you know what I'm talking about. You know this heavy weight that lays on your chest you know the sleepless nights, you know the anxiety that comes with it, until you do exactly what God wants you to do. And in that obedience, you find where you're supposed to be. And so that's what brings me here today. And one of my professors recently said, when you start preaching, make sure you do not start preaching with parables. They're the hardest thing you can do. <laughs> well, that's where Chris left me. So, here we are today. So, if we go back to Matthew 13, we look at our scripture reading, and we see that Jesus, when he explains it, tells us that we are the wheat of his field. He sowed us right where we were supposed to be. But then in the night, Satan came by and sowed weeds in this field. And when one of his slaves came and talked to him, he asked him, did you buy bad seed? What happened? And he said, no, somebody else put that there. So he asked him, well, do you want me to go ahead and pull the weeds? That's what makes sense. It would be easier now. He said, no. They're going to grow together. And that's where we find ourselves. We're God's people. And as we grow in a field, we have weeds that will overcome us. Growing up a farmer's daughter, I understand that there's a lot of time, there's a lot of effort, and there's a lot of money that go into growing a decent crop. First off, you buy good seed to start with. Sometimes that's a little bit more costly up front. You spend your time weeding those gardens. You go back and you make sure they're taken care of. And during the harvest time, you want to make sure that you've done everything that you can to make sure that you have done the best that you can to get the best crop for you and your family and the people that you're feeding. So how do we do that with our lives? How do we make sure that we've done the best that we can do? So we're going to look at that in three ways. Just like plants, we've got to stay rooted. First off, we're going to stay rooted in Scripture. Then we're going to stay rooted in our faith. And then we're going to stay rooted in grace. So, when we start looking at being rooted in Scripture, we know that roots have a lot of purposes with plants, right? So one of the first things that we know that roots do is we help them to grow. So just like in our lives, just like we, we want to make sure that we're growing. And that's what roots do for us. They reach down in the soil and they pull up all the water and all the food or the nutrients that plants need to be able to grow. So where do we get that from ourselves? We get that in scripture. That's where we've got to be fed from. So when we start to take over, we can lose out on the word of God. 
What does that look like for you? Is that maybe forgiving a family member that you haven't forgiven yet? Does that look like being surrounded in gossip and ugly things that come with it? I don't know about you, but if we're looking at my weeds in my life, that weed is Facebook. <laughs> okay. So you get on Facebook and there's lots of cute babies, but with the cute babies and the cute puppies come lots of ugly weeds. There comes lots of politics. There comes lots of vote for this guy, but I hate this guy. There comes, I'm scared to leave my house because of fear of COVID. There comes, go ahead, go out, this is all a hoax. There's so much that we can get overwhelmed in the weeds of life. I don't know about you, but I did. And if you spend enough time in scripture, God will come to convict you. And one day that's what he did to me. So as I'm reading through and I'm seeing posts on our leadership's pages, I, I found myself wondering, like, why wouldn't you just write a letter to your mayor? Why wouldn't you just write a letter to your senator? You send them an email. Why are you complaining about your family members? I just didn't understand. So that evening, I started reading my Bible, and God hit me with Matthew 18, 15. And I like the NIV version, so I wrote it down. But it says, if your brother or sister sins against you, go out and point out their faults just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you've won them over. So I started wondering, why aren't these people going directly to people? Why are they hiding behind the screen? Why aren't they confronting the person they feel has caused them all this pain and anguish? But now I'm being judgmental. <laughs> so... Of course, as scripture convicts you, if you stay in it long enough, I came across 2 Corinthians 2.15. And again, I have an NRSV version, but I liked the ESV version. And it reads, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And we should take every thought and make it captive. So as I find that I need to take my thoughts and I need to make them captive to God, my answer was get off Facebook. So I got off Facebook and again, I found another scripture that I felt convicted by. And again from the NIV, it says 1 Timothy 4.15. Be diligent in the matters of your heart. Give yourselves wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Now, what was that last word? Progress. It didn't say perfect. It didn't say your perfection. It did not say Give yourselves wholly to them so that everyone may see your perfection. And I think that's where we need to stand. We need to stand in a state of progress. So while your weeds may not be Facebook, your weeds may be something completely different. Maybe it's something or somebody you work with. Maybe it looks completely different. Maybe it's out of this realm. Maybe you're fighting evil that we can't see. Whatever that is. Our job is to stay in scripture so that we can strive for progress. The second thing we need to do is we need to stay rooted in our faith. And that's a hard one. Now somebody would probably give you a Webster's Dictionary definition of what faith is, but I couldn't wrap my mind around that one. So the best way I understood it was that faith is simply explained as being something you believe in, that you can't explain. Now there's a lot of things that I believe in that I cannot explain. 
And I was able to do this in the first service, which I realize I'm not going to be able to do now. But if you've ever heard anyone explain Santa Claus to people that don't have chimneys and how they get into their houses, that's really difficult. If you don't have a chimney, maybe he comes through the keyhole. I'm not sure how he gets into your house, but that's something that I just can't have faith in because I just don't understand how it all works. Maybe you do, and I hope you do. But there's other things, like how does Santa get to everybody's house on Christmas Eve? By my Google search and my math, which I would never rely on, Santa has approximately 0.23 seconds to visit every household in this world. He's a quick little booger. <laughs> Maybe there's just that many naughty kids. Okay? So, faith is just believing in something that you can't explain. And just like plants, our faith needs to take root. Roots have this other use as well. They store food and they store water for when they need it. When there hasn't been rain in long enough, they can pull water from their roots. When a farmer has forgotten to fertilize their crops, they can pull leftover stores of food from there. And just like plants, there are times when we come on really rough days. Maybe not just days, maybe weeks. Maybe periods of time. But we have to stay anchored in our faith. There's a lot of theologians, and they really like to compare things, I have found out. <laughs> and so they say that the opposite of faith is fear. The opposite of faith is fear. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of fear that makes you drive the speed limit. I'm not talking about the kind of fear that has you to put on a mask before you walk into a doctor's office. I'm talking about the kind of fear that stops you in your tracks. The kind that causes you to stay still when you should be moving forward in God's calling or faith for you. So if you're in high school, you know what I mean by the term haters. Or maybe you're a high school teacher and you just know what the word haters is by their lingo. But sometimes we allow those haters to speak to us in ways that we can't get rid of. We allow those weeds to overcome our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions. So I was asked in the first service how long it's been taking me to work on going to seminary and taking classes. Well, for being honest, the answer to that is over three years. So I can remember the first time I told my dad, I really feel like I'm being called to go into ministry. He said, well, I've seen it coming for a while. So if you know me, you know I have prayer journals. So I started going back, and I started digging up. I was like, surely it hasn't been that long. Well, I discovered it had been three years this month, actually. David Sawyer was actually our preacher before Chris Adams, if you knew him. And he was out probably on a fishing trip. <laughs> and he had a commissioned lay pastor come in. And I wrote in my journal, maybe I should look into doing this. Now, it's the first time the thought had even crossed my mind. But just as we, the wheat, grow, so does the wheat. And if you've ever thought that you're supposed to move and act on something, and you're anything like me, it probably takes you a lot of time to act on it. And so those weeds started popping up in my mind. Well, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. Here's my favorite. Well, I'm a woman. Is what it is, right? Now, maybe those things aren't weeds in your life, but there's something in your life that's a weed, I would bet. Maybe it's not Facebook. Maybe it's not somebody you work with. Maybe it is. Maybe it's that job you've been wondering about starting. Maybe it's that job you've been wondering about leaving. Maybe it's that trip that you need to take with your family. It's been sitting in the back of your mind that you can't shake. If I'm being honest, I have no idea what ministry holds in store for me. I don't know. 
I just know that I can't stay stuck. I have to move forward in God, in faith, with God. And I hope you can do the same. So we have two things. We have you need to stay rooted in scripture. You need to stay rooted in your faith. Both of those things are things that we can control. We can find five minutes to read a Bible study or listen to a 10-minute podcast on the way to work and stay rooted in Scripture. Even though it's hard, we can stay rooted in faith. But, most importantly, what we can't control is grace. And that's where we have to remain rooted. So, again, roots have this really important job. They keep plants anchored where they're supposed to be. Unless a gardener goes and picks them up like my sister does her peony bushes, they don't move. They stay rooted there. It took me a really long time to figure this part out. So, at the beginning of service, all the preachers get up and say, grace, mercy, and peace to you. That was really hard for me. But grace is not getting what we deserve. We are the sinful. We are the ones that deserve to die on the cross, but instead Jesus did. That was grace. He did something for us. He took something away from us that we don't deserve, or that we deserved. He did. Now on the flip side, we have mercy. And mercy is being given what we don't deserve. Just like in the parable, there's going to come a time when all of the angels are going to come down and they're going to bundle up the weeds and they're going to burn them. We don't deserve eternal everlasting life. We don't. But that's mercy. And that's something that is completely out of our control that we're given. We've got to stay there. We've got to remain in a place where we accept grace. So, in this time, we've got to remain rooted in Scripture, in our faith, and in God's grace. Now, I also, like I said, grew up as a farmer's child. So, if you've noticed, there are a lot of things that grow alone. There are trees, there are shrubs, there's all sorts of nursery ornamentals that grow alone. But I've never once seen wheat grow in a field alone. You might have a few pieces that the seeds have been washed by rain over to the side, but it's always in a field together. And that's here. That's our church. We're accountable for one another. To make sure that we remain rooted in scripture. To make sure we remain rooted in our faith. And to make sure that we are reminded as constantly as possible to find grace. And whatever that looks like for us. And I guess over 28 years, I've, I've been pretty lucky in this field. I mean, I, I stand in a congregation of two different services in which I have people who raised me. I have, from the earlier service, people who taught me and my children how to write our names. I taught, they've learned how to write. They've learned how to read the Bible. I have people in this room right now who I told them that I was scared to death because I didn't know if teaching was what I was supposed to do. I, in last service, had somebody that wrote my letter to Dubuque so that I could get into seminary. And then turned around and had to write it again because the mail wasn't running and it was the last day and they had to send an email within an hour. If you know Gail Alley, Walking through email that day was a, a work of grace. Yes. 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 These are the people that we're in a field with until the kingdom of God comes again. So we need to remain rooted in scripture, in our faith. Now, if you will join with me for a moment for our sound. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to remain rooted in you. Even though we may remain separated in two services, we appreciate that you found a way for us to be together. Lord, we ask for your hands on Ruby. If she walks through two weeks of quarantine, be with her and help her to know that there's nothing in death or life that separates us from your love. Be with all of our students that graduated. Be with them as they leave to find different pastures. And also be with those who stay at home to go online and visit different pastures virtually. You know the challenges that they face. God guide and direct them. Lord, we praise you for Paul Smann and his homecoming. But we also ask that you walk with Holly and Lee Markham. You know the holes that that can leave in hearts. Help them to be fill, help them to fill those holes with your grace and your presence. And Lord, as we go forth from this place, please help us to remember to stay rooted in you alongside each other so that the weeds may not overcome and that we can grow to be your harvest. And we also thank you for the words that your son taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory If you will now return to your bulletins, and if you will stand as you are able to recite our affirmation of faith together. I believe in the God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the resurrection. And now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you always. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you. Thank you.